What's up Brozones, welcome to the Ozone and welcome to another FNAF video. Today I want to talk a little bit about what's going on in the community um, this weekend. Uh, basically there is an event going on called PAX West and it's, it's in America unfortunately. I really really want to be there and to be honest I am considering maybe planning to go next year. Um, I, I'll, I'll let you know if that is going to ever happen, but I would love to see some of you at PAX West next year if I do go. Obviously that takes a lot of organisation, so maybe, maybe not. We'll see. And I'm really jealous that I can't be there because uh, they are doing a 10th birthday kind of um, area and, and it's it looks huge. Like there, there is a huge FNAF area at PAX West right now and there are lots of different posters on the walls and stuff that we're going to go through and there is one big thing that's happening over there and that is that people are getting to playtest Secret of the Mimic. Literally who'd have thought, like we got announced Secret of the Mimic not that long ago really. Um, it was the start of the month and we're already getting people um, like actually playing it or playing two levels from it and it seems like it's a really promising game from what I've heard. But we're going to be looking through a few Twitter posts that I've seen and we're going to be discussing um, a few theories and what could come out of this game. Starting out with Dorco, so this is... Uh, there's no way, there's no good way to do this. This is an image that Dorco has sent and it is of the animatronic that we saw in the the music box or the jack-in-the-box or whatever that is uh, in the trailer and a few good things to note is uh, first of all there was an employee over there that called this thing Jackie so we all thought this was Funky Tom obviously the classic Funky Tom name um, <laughs> it always comes back at some point but but this isn't Funky Tom at all it is in fact Jackie, um, which is a much, which is strangely a worse name than Funky Tom. But the implication of it, right, is that Jackie, Jack, Jack, Jack in the Box. So I, I have a feeling this is a Jack in the Box animatronic. It would make sense. Um, and obviously this game is called Secret of the Mimic, uh, and it, it supposedly takes place in 1979, uh, which we'll get onto in a little bit. But could this actually be the Mimic or not? Well, I, there's a few reasons I want to say yes, and there's a few reasons I want to say no. First of all, it would be really cool if this was just a standalone animatronic, and does it make that much sense if this is the Mimic? I don't really know. Like, it, what, the Mimic just randomly put on a Jack in the Box costume and pretended to be a Jack in the Box? I guess it makes sense for the character the Mimic to mimic things, but like, I don't know, it doesn't really completely add up. But at the same time, there is one crucial detail here which we really need to look at, and that is the fact that it doesn't have any legs, right? It's literally just the top half of an animatronic with wires dangling from the bottom, which is a really cool design, by the way. Uh, I really like that. And I think that the reason it's like that is because in the books, the mimic doesn't actually have legs or okay it doesn't have legs when it's first created per se it literally goes around on its arms a little bit like Monty in Ruin um, is it Ruin no I think it's just the the base security breach game but a little bit like how Monty does in security breach so that's what it's, it's very interesting here that we're seeing the fact that it doesn't have legs and I don't think that's just like a, a thing that they did with the animatronic. Like, I don't think they didn't finish the animatronic. I think that's a genuine design choice. Um, so that is very interesting. And also, another huge thing to note here is the fact that we have, um, we have a, an animatronic that is sort of reminiscent of the Paper Pal. Here's the Paper Pals that we all know and love. I mean, this was a, these were models that were recreated by, let me get the uh, the correct, uh, Jack Bo Jackie Boy FNAF. Oh my God, Jack! Ah! <laughs> so many Jacks. Um, but there we go. These are the Paper Pals. And as you can see here, um, we kind of have, we have the Bonnie and the Freddy 
which we, we talked about in this in our game theory reaction because of, co of course they talked about it. But on the left we have Buddy. Uh, and this is red and blue with a few buttons and a big smiley face. And notice the um, like the paper, yeah, you, yeah, anyway. Uh, so I think it looks a little bit like this. I like, I don't think it's perfect by any means, but it does sort of have similar colors. Um, and I think it, it could make sense for this to be the third paper pal. Although I'm not gonna say that definitely. Like I, I think there are definitely flaws with that, but, um, but there you go. Uh, and I, I really like this photo too. <laughs> oh, and this one. <laughs> Dorco just took a million photos there. That's great. Fantastic. So that's the first thing that we wanted to go through. Um, so is this the Mimic? Don't know. Is this a Paper Pal? Don't know. I think it's more likely to be the Mimic than the Paper Pal. Let's, let's say that. But um, th there you go. Uh, this is by Space Out Tracy. So... Uh, I'm actually going to like this, I forgot to like it. Uh, hi everyone, here's some photos I got the posters in the secrets of the Mimic booth. Hopefully in the highest possible quality as they aren't reposted. Thanks to the employees for letting us take these. That's very sweet. Um, so what we're actually seeing here is... I, I hate I, I hate the format of Twitter, man. I just hate it. Uh, Twitter is getting worse and worse by the day. So the, the key thing to take away here is that these were in the secrets of the Mimic booth right? Secrets of the Mimic booth. That means that, oh my gosh, Twitter. <laughs> that means that these pictures are relating to Secret of the Mimic. So here we have, what is this? <laughs> it looks like, okay, so first of all, I see a face here with like star sunglasses, like a big green mustache, green, long green hair, and like a bandana. Uh, so it looks like a new character, but there are, there are eight hands so this could be the spider animatronic that we also saw in the Mimic story. Is it the Mimic? No, we saw it in uh, the epilogues, I think. Um, there was a spider animatronic that the Mimic jumped into very briefly, and this could be it. Um, so that is going to be, that's going to be terrifying if, <laughs> if there is a spider animatronic in Secret of the Mimic. I think they know what they're doing, right? They, they know that we love and hate DJ Music Man because of how giant he is and because of his spider-like body and I think I think maybe we might get more of that sort of thing which which is going to be really cool to see but it's going to be terrifying. We also have Be Yourself. Um, looks like a Don't Hug Me I'm Scared character. <laughs> Not going to lie. But um, this is very interesting. Um, I'll, like when, when we get to the last photo I'll, I'll show you why this is interesting. But it seems like we're getting a bunch of new characters, which which I'm all, all down for. And it seems like we're getting a lot of new animal characters as well. Um, here's a welcome. So we, we seem to have another hippo that's purple. So not necessarily Mr. Hippo, but there you go. And then what are these? Are they frogs? Are they... They're lizards of some sort? There's also a snake along the floor. Interesting posters. That says welcome. And look at where they're at. They're in like the middle of a forest. Sort of reminds me of one thing, Fall Fest, right? I feel like I could be onto something with that. I, I think the, the big welcome in sort of spooky orange letters in like this, this weird spooky font. But like this looks like it, it is at the Fall Fest. Uh, and the hippo is playing a violin. And I'm not gonna question that because why would I? And then here, this is very, very interesting indeed. Freddy Fazbear's Pizza coming soon, okay? I actually looked at this image um, for the first time before and I'm, I'm really I'm really dumb. Uh, I saw this image and I was like, oh yeah, it's, it's the same, same poster we got in Security Breach, I think. Okay, cool. Didn't even think about the fact that it said coming soon on the front. What does that mean? Well, that means if this is in 1979, it means that Freddy Fazbear's Pizza doesn't exist yet. And that's very exciting. We're gonna see pre-Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. I don't think we've seen that before in the timeline. Um, no, we haven't actually. We, we've never we've never seen pre-Freddy Freddy Fazbear's in universe. So that's, 
that's very interesting. We are getting like a full on prequel. Um, and yeah, so it looks like we're going to get loads of new mascot characters um, that came before Freddy Fazbear's Pizza even existed. Obviously, I'm thinking as well on the coin in Help Wanted, it says Freddy Fazbear's, or no, it doesn't say Freddy Fazbear's, it says Fazbear Entertainment since 1983. I would assume that Freddy Fazbear's Pizza came with with Fazbear Entertainment in 1983, but we don't we don't know for sure. Um, so there we go. Thank you, Spaced Out Tracy, for those images. And then Entom here. Um, we we love we love Entom. Uh, my friend Wheat went to Pax West and made a very in-depth summary or recollec recollection, sorry, of the secret of the mimic demo. Check this out. Um, and I've been told by people as well to, to share this around. So I'm going to do that right now. There we go. Uh, I'm going to read this for you. Uh, I don't know if you can see the full thing, but I'm going to read it for you either way. So manager's office. So this is so there are two levels that are being shown at, uh, at PAX, PAX West. There's the manager's office and there is the chase. And it seems like one is going to come after the other. Um, it's going to be like a progression. It's, it's like a timeline kind of based game where like you you go through the game and it, it's a little bit like sister location, I guess. Um, I don't know that for sure. I'm just I'm kind of um, speculating, but it seems like one comes after the other and you'll see why. So manager's office, you start out in a sort of dilapidated looking storage area. There's a closed gate in front of you with a machine with a missing piece next to it. You can't do anything with this yet. If you go the other way, there's a themed room filled with all sorts of gifts and party decor. The ruin elephant costume is there, but massive and clean. The employee watching my gameplay said it's one of their new characters. There's also a lot of other unidentifiable characters. So that is very interesting right off the bat, right? First of all, the Ruin Elephant costume there, but completely clean. This kind of solidifies for me that those Ruin costumes were all there, or, or they have been there for ages, maybe. They they came right from the start. They were before, they, they dated, they predated Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, right? And they still exist. And they seem to be mimic costumes. Absolutely, 100%. So, there we go. It's it's very interesting that the Ruin Elephant costume is back and it seems like we might get more of that sort of thing where we, we have that connection to... It, it's really weird how we're getting connections from the earliest part of the timeline to the latest part of the timeline. But I think one, one of the... When the trailer originally released, I think someone's description on Twitter was like, you have to go back to the past to move forward on the future or something. Um, I, I can't remember what that exact quote was, but it was something like that. We have to look back in the past. Um, the room is square, but a lot of these decorations form a barrier through the middle, so you have to go around it to the right. At the far right of the room is a big gift box with a big crank. If you crank it enough, Jackie pops out and says something. I can't remember due to the volume of the PAX crowd. And the crank pops off. Jackie just kind of idles after that in the fully springed out pose. You can use this crank in the slot in the wall to open the earlier blocked gate. Okay, so that's that's sort of like a little bit of game. It seems like free room, free room, free, free roam gameplay again. But uh, something that people were pointing out um, a few days ago is that it was uh, it was like on the PlayStation Store, um, and it said what kind of what the specs were, etc. And it said that it had VR support. Not necessarily that this is going to be a VR game but it had VR support. So this is going to probably be another free roam game, but then you also kind of have that like Princess Quest 4 kind of vibe where you can like choose where you move, but you're in, you're at, you feel more immersed in it. So that's really cool. If you progress past Jackie, the other half of the room continues. There's a locked door at the far end, um, but the door is locked. The lock itself was a weird downward sloped cylinder with two print pick holes, like a faz wrench input. Oh, interesting, Faz Wrench. That that seems to be a lot earlier than I thought. Uh, this area is surrounded by cutouts of what seems to be knights and some slightly medieval theming. Wow. Anyways, the crank opens the gate and you crouch under it. You enter a long hallway. There's a ton of observation windows on the right to what almost looks like a heavily uh, under construction atrium with multiple floors. 
smaller than the Pizza Plex and more retro in construction. Almost looking uh, more like a dusty warehouse with now with how under construction and dilapidated it is. The left wall of the observation hall has a bunch of posters, I believe the Fred Bears. Full, full fest posters might have been there, but so were posters for a few other mascots with different names that I cannot remember. One of the characters was green, that's all I remember. So interesting that we kind of have this um, transition from Full Fest to Freddy's. Um, you, we're going to be seeing Full Fest posters, um, and I'm, I'm going to love the retro aspects of this game as well, like like how um, kind of old timey it's going to feel. I think that's that's going to be a really cool aspect. Um, and I really feel like recently we've been having a lot of like technology and uh, and really like sci-fi stuff. Uh, so it's going to be really cool to maybe go back and get sort of like that original FNAF sort of vibe but obviously with different characters and stuff because we're not, we're probably not going to be seeing Freddy Fazbear much in this game, if at all. Um, that's something I'm a bit concerned about actually, like is this going to feel a bit too foreign for FNAF? Um, and are they kind of moving away from Freddy entirely? That's interesting to think about. Uh, continuing past that you get to the manager's office. The manager is an upper half of a staff bot, but with a much more rustic and prototype-esque design. To an extent, think of the metal textures used for Ruin's Mimic model, the whole thing was a kind of dark grey. That's interesting that even the staff bots seem to kind of predate Freddy's. Um, not necessarily predate, and it's not necessarily the staff bots, but like it's, it's interesting that that sort of technology was around back then, even, and... Um, and that's going to be interesting to see, and I, I really like the staff bots as well, so it's going to be cool to see similar things in this game. Um, the upper half is mounted to a base with a bunch of rectangular buttons on it, so the manager presses regularly as it's idle animation. I don't believe it says anything to you. At the far back is a generator. The small VR game, we have to rev up the generator by pulling a pull cord a few times in succession. As you rev up the generator, Jackie's arms slink into the room. I think it gets stuck on the door frame and ripped in half as it tries to get you. I don't recall if that happens yet, but the animation is extremely fluid and this thing's big arms are basically going everywhere trying to support its body. The manager turns around and either lets out a noise or says something again, to which Jackie literally destroys it, slamming it to the floor and then throwing the manager at the wall next to you, breaking it open. You end the minigame by running through the hole and falling down a bit below the level of the room and then the debris under you slowly falls apart until it gives way to a fall. So there you go, that's sort of like the manager's office part of the game. And then it goes on to the chase. You're in a sort of utility tunnel area, not in the SB way. Uh, of course, it's not It's not in the Peterplex. Every now and then though, uh, every now and then through grating or behind pipes and such, you see Jackie moving around like a spider, barely visible. You eventually come across a large open area with an elevator. Riding the elevator up, you see a vent near the walkway in front of you and Jackie begins crawling out of it. The gate of the elevator opens and the chase begins as you basically have to keep moving or you get killed. Um, every now and then there's switches you have to pull which uh, open doors ahead of you. Sometimes the switches are out of the way so you have to be quick. Later on in the chase Jackie erupts from the hallway in front of you, pull a switch, smashing the door to the hallway um, down on top of Jackie's head, stopping them for a bit. Really well done animations this entire time by the way. Really good to hear that they're doing a good job with the game. Doing a U-turn down another hallway you come across a conveyor belt that's blocked and another generator minigame to get to the conveyor belt started. Once it starts, it takes you into a vent. After enough crouching through the vent, eventually you fall through one of the panels where Jackie corners you. Your movement looks locks in place at this point and the demo ends on a cliffhanger. That is interesting. Um, and so it seems like we're activating Jackie at this moment in time. Um, sounds a little bit like Poppy Playtime gameplay, I, I've heard people say. Uh, and I see the reason you say that, it's, it's gonna be like, uh, you can't escape, like, you can't escape this, like, cutscene. Um, you have to go through the cutscene and then you run. You, you just have to keep running and that's, that's the part of the game. Um, which, like, I'm fine with. I think that's okay gameplay. It's, if it, if it's keeping you on your toes and it's giving you that tension, it's building that tension, um, then so be it, right? I'm, I'm completely fine with it. Um, so something I, I just want to say here is like we're in we're in this dilapidated factory area storage looking area uh, and it's all under construction. 
This really ties into the books. Um, in the books, there is a story called The Mimic, and it's where Edwin works in a factory. He's actually building the Freddy's animatronics at the time, and that is where The Mimic is also created. Uh, the Mimic was created for his son David, um, and, and basically, this factory is left abandoned after he he beats the mimic, um, and yes, so the factory is abandoned with the mimic. But then a lot of uh, Fazbear like employees are sent in to to check on the place, uh, and they get locked in the abandoned factory and killed by the mimic. Brutal murders, um, and so it seems like we're going to have that sort of gameplay in here. We're going to be going through this factory trying to avoid the mimic. Um, and then we're going to see what happens. I don't know what, where the story can go from here, and I don't know what the secret that the Mimic is. But either way, this is really interesting. Are you excited for this game? What do you think about the, this sort of gameplay? I think it's really promising, but uh, let me know in the comments below what you think. And uh, I'm going to see you in another video. Goodbye.